So this is going to be done a little bit differently in that the settings we use in here in the chamfer, whether we want to off offset from top or offset from the bottom, is going to be dependent on whether or not, or sorry, where we actually grab our geometry from. So I'm going to clear all the geometry here, and I'm going to chain from the top, the top loop. And we'll step around. Actually, I got an edge there instead of a loop, but that's okay. And we'll come in and do this top face here as well. Okay, so we grabbed the top edge of the chamfer. Uh, since we already have a chamfer, we do not want to specify a chamfer width. And since we grabbed the top edge, we need to do a, a top offset. So this will make a gap from the top edge that we selected to the actual top cutting edge of our part. I'm going to say eighth of an inch. Everything else will remain the same, and I will rebuild. So there you can notice a few weird things happening over in here. The first chamfer around the main boss or the main pocket is fine. But when we get into this boss in the middle here, there's quite a bit of repositioning happening. So if you do have a, um, a part with chamfers on it already, we'll go through why this is happening. But what I would suggest you do, let me just copy this operation and do it the opposite way. If you have a model with chamfers on it already, I would suggest that you grab the bottom of the chamfer, keeping in mind that it is a bit more work to create the geometry to chain since we need to use linked edges. And then we'll go around this guy here using the bottom. Okay, so both chains are done now using the bottom edge of the geometry. So we'll come back over and go to bottom. Um, I guess we can do the same thing. 50,000 should be okay, and we'll go okay and regenerate that. So we'll have a look at the difference here. Notice this time there's two complete chains doing the same chamfer, but this this chamfer around the boss is not getting broken up like this one is. So the reasoning behind this is the sharp corner. So if we chain the geometry at the top, uh, we could do some math and, and draw up some geometry to show it. But basically what happens is the arc of the tool path does violate the bottom corner of the chamfer. So this toolpath is seeing that as obviously a problem. Its whole point of this toolpath is to avoid gouging into the solid model. So it sees that as a, a, a part it needs to avoid, and it does a reposition to recut. So you can change that behavior, though, just in the toolpath. If you come in here and turn your roll cutter parameters to none, that will fix it. So now we're getting the full chain with no repositions, but notice we've lost the, uh, the smooth transition around the corner that we have here. Again, I don't know for sure if there's ways to address this that are better than that, that are forthcoming, but for now, um, if you do have a model with chamfers on it and you can't take the chamfers off using uh, a model prep function, then I would suggest grabbing the bottom of the chamfer and using that as the geometry to chamfer with. Otherwise, if you use the top, just remember to turn off the roll cutter around corner setting here. There is one more situation I wanted to cover here, and I'm going to copy this model avoidance chamfer here and just add to it, add some extra geometry. Okay, so I've added some chains here into this, uh, this operation that's going to have to avoid the solid model, make sure that it doesn't gouge. So I've still got the original geometry here. I've got this section in here now as well. I've also got this edge, this edge, and a chain that runs around 
here. So all of these chains have possible collisions at the beginning and end of the path. So with that, I'm going to launch into a solid verify and have a look at the results. So the only thing we should see is actual chamfers being applied to the part. And that's not the case. This first chain looks good. The second one, we're getting some problems over here. And these two side chamfers are, are violating the solid over here and over here. So that's not ideal. So we've got a problem with that tool path we need to clean up. So we've done our chaining the way we were supposed to. We've told it that we want 50 thousand of side clearance, but we're still having an issue. And what I found for this is the best use here is avoidance, uh, an avoidance model. The thing here is to not think of this as a solid model to add. Just think of it as adding in faces of a part that um, you want to make sure the tool does not void. So again, I'm going to go into this avoidance model here. Click select surfaces. The on-screen prompt. Uh, we could select the entire solid. However, if we did that, then the chamfers themselves would be voiding what we're telling it to avoid. So that's going to be problematic. So just want to select surfaces that uh, this toolpath is hitting that it shouldn't be. So we're getting a gouge over in here, so I can click on that face. This should clear up this issue over here as well. And then we are getting collisions, or sorry, I shouldn't say collisions, should say gouges. We're getting gouges in this area here, so if I select this face here, that should fix up that problem. So that should fix everything. I'm using that same 50 thou value for a distance to avoid the selection by. We'll hit OK, we'll rebuild, and relaunch into a solid verify. And we should now be good as far as having good chamfers but not having any voids into the solid. Okay, so I think, uh, let me just go back here and turn this off. So we're better. I think the issue in here now is the offset. So this middle one is not cutting all the way around because I'm too far outside here. So let's go to top and 50. and see if that keeps us far enough away from these selected avoidance faces, but uh, allows us to still apply a chamfer in here. Uh, that looks better. There we go. So now we're getting a chamfer around in there. We're not getting anything in here because of the issue of colliding in that, that area. Not colliding, but gouging. And the two sides. Again, we're not getting much chamfer in here. It's because of one it's the amount of value that we've told it to stay away from these edges, and two, we are using a rather large chamfering tool. It's a half inch diameter. If I'd selected a quarter, we could get much closer to these side walls, but uh, if you had to come in here and do some filing by hand afterwards to deburr these edges, uh, that's still saved you quite a bit of time and not having to actually uh, chamfer that part right there. So that's the new tool path in a nutshell, the new model chamfer and its use, and um, some things to watch out for along the way.